If you ask an airline pilot to name the most overpowered plane flying today, nearly all of them will tell you it's the Boeing 757. With extremely powerful engines for its size and a supercritical wing, the plane is affectionately known as the sports car of the sky. It'll thunder down runways, get airborne quickly, and reach crews in a jiffy. Now, ask those same pilots what the most underpowered plane is, and they're just as likely to reach a consensus. More likely than not, they'll tell you it's the A340, specifically the A340-300. This plane is the 757's polar opposite, a massive lumbering beast that leisurely accelerates as it takes to the skies. While the 757 has engines that are arguably too big, the A340-300 has engines that are undeniably too small. So why did Airbus stick tiny engines on this gigantic plane? Let me explain. Before hopping into the video, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, PayPal Honey. Now, don't skip this because Honey is going to make your holiday shopping so much easier. With inflation currently out of control, I know I'm dreading having to buy gifts this year. I'm sure you are too. Our wallets are really going to be feeling the hurt. But Honey's here to help. It's an online shopping tool that's designed to save you money. Let me show you how it works. Next week, I'm going to be in Europe visiting Airbus, and it's going to be pretty cold. I currently don't own a beanie, so I actually really need to buy one. When I go to check out, Honey finds and applies coupon codes that I didn't even know about, and bam, I just saved 40%. The best thing about Honey is that it's absolutely free to download, and works on websites you're probably already shopping at. So if you want to support me and the work I do, while also saving some cash, you should add Honey to your browser by going to joinhoney.com slash Kobe. In order to understand just how underpowered the A340 is, we ought to start by looking at some numbers. For this exercise, we're going to compare the A340-300 to the 787-9, the Boeing jet that most closely matches its range and capacity. Because the A340 is built from aluminum and the 787 is built from composites, the A340 weighs quite a bit more. It's about 11 tons heavier when both aircraft are empty. And yet, the A340 puts out less thrust than the Dreamliner, and as a result, its thrust-to-weight ratio is about 10% less than the 787. Okay, but what does that actually translate to in real life? Well, I ran a little experiment to find out. I searched YouTube and found 8 takeoff videos for the A340 and 8 for the 787. I then timed the duration of each takeoff roll, and found that the A340 took on average 10 seconds longer to get off the ground. Of course, this experiment isn't perfect and can't control for things like load factor. So let's try to control for that variable by looking at some performance charts. According to 787 flight performance data, the plane needs about 9,100 feet of runway to lift off at full capacity. In comparison, the A340-300 needs 10,200 feet, and once each plane is in the air, the Boeing can climb quicker than the Airbus. The 787's climb profile means that, at its maximum takeoff weight, it can reach a cruising altitude of 38,000 feet in about 25 minutes. In comparison, the A340 makes the climb in about 40 minutes. Now, I know this is going to come as a real shock to us all, but the culprit for the A340's underperformance is its engines. The A340-300 is powered by four CFM-56s. Now, if that name rings a bell, it's probably because the CFM-56 is the most popular jet engine of all time. Over 33,000 of them have been built to date, and it powers six different aircraft families. But take a closer look at this list. Does anything look off to you? Well, it seems that one of these things is not like the others. The A340 is the only widebody. You see, the CFM-56 was originally designed to power small planes, and the engine itself is also fairly small. At just 72 inches in diameter, it's by far the smallest widebody engine in operation today. For comparison, the engines that power the aforementioned 787 have a fan diameter of 111 inches. That's over 50% bigger. 
It's no wonder then that many people think the A340-300 is severely underpowered. But all of this begs the question, why? Why did Airbus choose to stick tiny engines on such a big plane? Well, it turns out that the CFM-56 wasn't Airbus's first engine of choice. When the company was first designing the A340, they were hoping to power it with the IAE Superfan. The Superfan was truly ahead of its time. Not only would it leverage advanced composite materials and contoured titanium fan blades, but it would also employ a geared turbofan architecture. The geared turbofan has long been the holy grail of turbofan design. In a normal engine, the primary fan, compressor, and turbines are connected via a single drive shaft, and as such, they all spin at the same speed. But for a whole bunch of complicated technical reasons, this leads to inherent inefficiency. A geared turbofan solves these shortcomings. This type of engine adds a gearbox behind the primary fan, allowing it to rotate at a different, slower speed than the engine's internal components. This can drastically optimize airflow through the engine, increasing its bypass ratio and improving efficiency. In the case of the IAE Superfan, this would have delivered a 20% fuel burn advantage over its closest rivals. The only problem is that getting such a gearbox to work reliably has long been a challenge. But even so, IAE convinced Airbus that it could successfully bring the technology to market. To some degree, Airbus didn't have much of a choice but to believe them. The A340 was envisioned to be a quadjet, a design choice that allowed for greater versatility on long-haul routes, but also added weight and decreased efficiency. The Superfan was Airbus's best chance to make the design efficient. Unsurprisingly, the Superfan never made it to market. The technical hurdles were just too great to overcome. As it turns out, the technology wasn't even close to being commercially viable. It took 20 more years of advancement before a geared turbofan would hit the market, with Pratt & Whitney debuting the technology in 2008. The Superfan's failure really put Airbus in a bind. After all, they had already promised its performance to customers. So the company had to get creative and ultimately settled on the tiny CFM-56 as a stand-in. Its small size meant that it sipped fuel, helping the A340 stay relatively efficient. But it also reduced the plane's thrust by more than 10,000 pounds and leads to the lackluster takeoff performance that we see today. But the CFM-56 doesn't just affect takeoff performance. It affects the A340's value proposition as a whole, and not in a good way. Its inferior performance meant that Airbus had to increase the A340's wingspan by 2.6 meters. This helps generate more lift, but it also adds weight to the design and worsens aerodynamic efficiency. And at the end of the day, this decreased the plane's range by about a thousand nautical miles. The CFM-56 also makes the plane slower. Most wide-body aircraft cruise anywhere from Mach 0.84 to Mach 0.92, but the A340-300 cruises at just Mach 0.82 and is actually most efficient at Mach 0.78. On long-haul flights, this speed difference can add over an hour to flight time. This impacts everything from crew training to maintenance and also forces passengers to spend more time on the plane. Great for ab geeks, but not so great for everyone else. Lastly, the plane's reduced takeoff performance limits the number of airports it can fly in and out of. It's no surprise, then, that Airbus ditched the CFM-56 when designing later A340 variants. The A340-500 and A340-600 both utilize the Trent 700, which is a proper wide-body engine. They are significantly bigger and significantly more powerful than the CFM-56. As a result, these larger A340 variants can produce up to 244,000 pounds of thrust, which is nearly double that of the A340-300. But of course, with more power comes more fuel burn, and these aircraft are known for being notorious fuel hogs. Ultimately, Airbus was just never able to strike the right balance between power and efficiency with its A340 family. Now, if it sounds like Airbus got incredibly unlucky with the A340-300, this is really just where the misfortune starts. As a matter of fact, I made a whole separate video detailing why the A340 family as a whole is the most unlucky aircraft of all time. If you haven't checked that video out yet, I highly recommend you do. I'll leave a link to it at the top of the video description. 
So have you folks ever flown the A340? Personally, I never have, and since they're becoming so rare, I'm worried I may never have the chance to do so. If you've flown one though, I'd love to hear about your experience, especially if you've been part of a super long takeoff roll. I'm looking forward to reading your stories down in the comments. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.